Hi guys, we're going to be modeling and texturing the can you saw in the intro. So let's start with a basic block out. So first of all, this is a Toolboy can from the craft beer company Silo. And they've very kindly agreed to let me use this can. And so I've got this mock up here and just a couple of quick references. So if we need to zoom in on any details, we know what's going on there. And this program, if you aren't familiar with it, is called PureF, and it's very helpful because we can drag in all the images we want off our desktop, and then even when we're in cinema, PureF stays on top. So it means that we don't need to keep going back and forth between references, which is great. So we've got our references here. So first of all, I've made a quick note. Tallboy cans aren't standardized completely so there's a little bit of wiggle room but i just want to try to stick to a semi-accurate scale so let's start with this so we'll grab a cylinder and so this is in centimeters and this is in millimeters so we just need to be careful there so this is going to be like 15.7 centimeters and the diameter is 52 so 5.2 but we'll, this is radius so we need to divide in half so it'll be about 2.6 so this is about to scale and just to check this we can grab a figure and this figure is the size of like an average human on 80 so that's looking okay to me so let's zoom back in and first thing is we will turn on our shading so we can see how it's segmented. And now I want to drag in my reference. So I want to go into the front view and click on cylinder and click S and that will make it the size of the window, which is what we want. And then I need to go shift V and in back we can choose a reference image. So I've already got this reference we can use. And this reference is way too big, but this scale is length, so all we need to do is grab one of them and we can scale it down. And so I've got about the right size that I want, but now I want to make this cylinder equal to the can reference. And we can drag it along the offset as well. So I'm going to make this the same size as the width and we can turn the transparency up as well so we can see our lines better. Okay, so I don't think the cylinder should be so tall here. And we also want to keep in mind there's probably a bit of perspective in play, but think about that should do we'll give it a little bit of leeway on the top so we've got our basic shape and we also have um, our reference images so next up we want to block this out really roughly and just for those of you who haven't done much of it before let's do a quick explanation of how subdivision modeling actually works so we have our very helpful subdivision service modifier here. So we can drag in our cube and this is gonna become a sphere. And it's because here we have two subdivisions and a viewport. This is for renderer, so we're not using this currently, so we could set this to zero and it won't make a difference. If we set this to one, you see everything's going to divide once. So without subdivision surface, we have a cube and then it's gonna be cut like this. So obviously, if we turn this up, we're going to get a nice sphere, and that's because we don't have any supporting geometry. So the first thing we need to do is click C on this cube, and that means it's editable. And then let's look at adding some geometry to this cube. So I'll turn off subdivision surface, and in our cube, I want to go into face mode, and then I can click ML, and this is going to give us a loop cut. And if we click this here, and we can turn subdivision service back on, and then up our subdivisions, you can see when we add this loop cut, 
we're getting a more gentle curve and that's because these points are now being calculated between these two lines. So that's kind of the theory we want to use when we're modeling the bear can as well. So instead of having to have heaps of geometry and really carefully move everything, we can use supporting loops in the geometry to get these nice curves. And it means that everything's a lot lighter, easy to edit, easy to work with. So yeah, let's start. So I'm gonna start off in our side view. And the first thing we need to do is work out how many lines we need before we make this editable. So I want to try line these up slightly. And I think we're gonna go with something like that. Number one, it means that all of the squares are somewhat equal, which is great for topology. And it also means we don't have so many that we're gonna get in trouble later. First, I'm going to make a null and we're going to call this archive. And I'm going to duplicate the cylinder. And this means if we mess up our modeling, we can always go back. So make sure to often save. And now click C to make editable. And let's go into our side view. And now we want to start working. So first thing I want to do is reduce this top engine. So we have our point mode, our line mode, and our face move. I'm going to go into line mode and click UL, and this is going to select a loop. So we can click this top loop now and click T and scale in. And let's go to about there. And now we'll go into face mode, and we can use the selection tool to select all the faces. And then we want to drag down on the Y a little bit. So this is far from perfect, obviously, but on our first run, we just want to block out the really basic geometry. So now we can go down to the bottom and it looks like we have two different curves. So I'm gonna click ML and that's gonna be our loop cut and we'll cut about here. And then I'm going to click UL to select this loop and T for scale. And I'm going to scale in. And then I'm going to click E and we're going to drag up. And I can't do that because I need to make sure I have everything selected. So we'll select all of the bottom and drag this up a little bit because our perspective is probably messing with us a bit. And we're not going to do it now, but I'm just going to add in one more loop, loop cut in the middle. And I think here, this looks like it's exactly in the middle of the curve. So if you want to get the middle between two edge loops, you can hold down shift and that's going to give you values at 25, 50 and 75%. So this is 25, this is 50, this is 75. So if we click here, that's the exact middle. And then we can mess with this further but we're gonna leave that for now. And let's zoom out again. And as you're modeling, you just wanna to think to yourself whether this does look like the right shape. And I think this is our first run, so now we're gonna go back in and add some more detail. So first thing we wanna do is get this edge here. So I think what's happening here is we have this extruded lip. So we're going to need to add quite a bit of supporting geometry to make this work and to get these radius looking on. Okay, so UL, edge wide. And just one more thing before I start this, I've got key bindings for point, edge and face set to one, two, three. And I find this really useful for switching back and forth between um, modes, because we're gonna do that quite often. So I think I'm gonna line this one up quite exactly now. And let's grab all of this to line up. Go on, so ML, UL, scale in, UL to select, T to scale. 
ML shift, grab the center, U L to select, T to scale. Nice. And we've got a really small radius here. So I'm going to take two of these points and bring it out more. So let's grab this 25 and bring this 25 UL to select. And UL to scale on. I'm going to bring in the bottom just a little bit. Okay, cool. So in situations like this, you want to have a subdivision set up and you don't want to model with the subdivision on because it gets a little bit confusing, but you just want to see how everything's looking. So we can turn off our line shading to check. And as long as all the shading is looking okay, you're probably good to go. So I think that's going to be okay. But now the next thing to tackle is this part here. So I think what we want to think about is how we can get this curve. So I'm going to make a loop cut. So get our cylinder, ML. Let's make a loop cut here. And let's scale on. And now I want a supporting loop about here. UL to select, T to scale. And now let's just check that subdivision. So I'm pretty happy with that curve. And we also want to make sure that our topology is pretty square here. And just something else to note, because I started with such low geometry here, after we subdivided, everything actually shrinks in a little bit. So I can go in and I might just scale this. So we can grab this. And scale her up a little bit. And that's still fitting. And this is what's really nice about this modeling style is now I think this needs to come in a little bit more. So I click UL, grab this loop, and just bring it in a tad. And that's looking good to me again. Okay, let's tackle this bottom part. So the first thing you see is because we don't have any supporting geometry yet, this is a really big curve. So we want to add quite a close edge loop here so that it goes quite abruptly before it goes in. So we'll turn off our subdivision and let's grab ML again. And I want a loop here and here. And let's just check that really quickly. Yep, that's looking much better. And now we need to think about this part. So I'll grab ML, make sure I have a cylinder selected. And actually I want to select UL first because this needs to go in a whole lot. And you can think of this as the central segment, right? And then we have a supporting loop here and a supporting loop here. So now here we probably want to think about, let's turn this on like just a chip. And if you can't see it here, it's also a good idea just to go in and see how it's looking. So I mean, that's looking pretty close to me already i think this needs to be a little bit sharper so we'll go ml and if we make it like here it's going to get really sharp right let's turn on so you can see but if we move it further away we can click ul and select this edge loop and then slide is really useful now just before if we click clone, it's going to duplicate this and slide along. If we don't have clone, it just means that we can move this really easily. So you can make an edge loop wherever you want and then use clone to kind of massage it along until we find like a good spot. So we might try something like that. And then the last thing to do is just work on this bottom a bit. So I'm going to make sure nothing's selected so I can see what it's looking like. And it's looking a little bit too bulbous. So as usual, we're gonna to have to add in another edge loop. So I might put one about 
there. And we might just keep it like that for now. Again, the great thing about subdivision surface modeling is it's very easy to go back later and switch it up. So if we bring up pure refs, I think we're close up for now. If we want to add a little bit more detail and realism later, we can always go and make it a bit harsher. So I think the last thing we can do is we need to go into the bottom actually because back hands aren't going to be completely flat, right? There's going to be a dip up. And let's grab something like this. And then if we go into radius point mode, we can just grab this middle point and bump up like this. And I don't think we're going to be doing any shots in this project that involve the bottle, bottom, so I'm not going to get too fussy. If you're not going to see it, don't bother spending a lot of time, but we'll just add a couple of supporting loops for good practice. We've got one there and one there. Oh, just a quick shortcut. We could just go into line mode and if you don't want to use UL for your selection you can just use double click and hold shift if you want to get multiple lines and let's just bring this up a little bit just a tad and this means that on our central loop we're going to have a slight curve down so let's turn on our subdivision surface and honestly again we're not going to be able to see the bottom so that's going to be good enough for now Sorry, I just have to make this a little bit more obvious. Now there's one last thing, and I'm going to take this back to zero so we can do it. Let's grab a new disk so I can quickly show you what I mean. Um, it's really important when we're modeling to keep everything as close to square as you can. And the reason is, when you have things that aren't squares, you're going to end up with these points, which I think people call poles, where everything comes to a point. And if you're working on a low poly object like this, there's no problem. But I'll show you the problem, is if we grab a subdivision surface to make things look more detailed and realistic, and we put something like a disk inside, you can see as we turn up our subdivisions, we're going to start getting this pinching. And if you play this game long enough, this is going to completely break your model. And it looks really bad. And if you're trying to apply textures to it, it's not going to work. And it's going to ruin the model. So, some very clever people have found a good workaround to this. And all we need to do is make an edge cut on the bottom. And then we go into line mode and we delete these middle parts and then we can grab oh pk is the shortcut and we grab this tool and we just cut across like this and this means that if we subdivide this down we're not going to get that weird pinch in and you can see here, this might look like a problem, but it's actually not too bad. It's just, we could drag this out in theory. And this is just a weirdly shaped square again, because we have one, two, three, four sides. So whenever you get circles, you want to do something like this, just to get rid of that weird geometry. And then if we were getting really crazy about it, maybe we could add in one more supporting loop here. Yeah, so that circles, and now we need to stretch this up a little bit. So again, because this isn't a big detail, we can just drag this up. And that's going to be fine, anyway. let's just see if that's what. Yeah, so this geometry is um, much preferable. So then let's have another look from the front. And we'll turn off our lines just to check if everything's looking okay. And that's looking pretty clean to me. So first round, I'd leave it at something like this. It's always possible to go in later if something doesn't look right. You don't want to overdo it. 
Hi guys, so we've got the body of the can. If you guys are interested, let me know, and we can also cover how to do this top part. But I think today, let's just focus on getting a body shot. So first we're gonna do a little bit of lighting setup and then we'll do some material work. So I'm gonna grab a rigid camera here and we'll go into coordinates and let's keep this super flat to start with. And now let's get our first area light. And you know that I like using targets. If you've seen any videos before. So in target, let's make the cylinder the target. And then we can go into a secondary view and we can get a perspective and pull this light out. And the light is going to be way too big to start with, obviously. But let's click play on this one. And now this is currently acting as like a broom light or something, but I want this to be our main light. So let's drag this around. And I don't actually need to have the preview on because I know the general area that I want. And I'm gonna go into Control D and display and set this to medium again. And let's see how that's looking. All right, cool. So we've got uh, this one light behind that's giving us this nice edge. And then we've got our main area light. So at the moment, this area light is a little bit too overpowering. So I'm going to drag this back. And let's turn that intensity down to, say, 65 for now. And on this back light, it does look really good, but it might be a little bit too obvious. So we can drag this down too. And while we're here, let's grab a fill light. So this is gonna go on the less dominant side. And I don't want this to do a lot, but I just want it to fill in the black a little bit. So you can see some of the cam. I like shows the entire shape. So this can be set to something pretty low. I think that'll work for now. And this will obviously depend on what look you're going for. And in here, we can set this to 150 or something. All right, let's zoom out on this. Okay, we won't worry about doing a background for now, that's enough. So I've got this basic setup, and also I can see a few edges in here. So let's go into our subdivision surface, and we can turn down our viewport to zero, because it doesn't matter what's going on here, but let's turn this up to three. And that's just gonna make it a little bit nicer. Cool. So now we need to talk about what we're gonna do for materials. So if we bring up our PRF, most hands typically have this thing going on where you can see the metal part on the bottom and the top and then the middle part is completely covered by the sticker, the branding. So I think that's what's going on in the silo can as well by the looks of things. So let's work out how we can do this. I'm going to go out of my camera and we'll turn that off for now. And I'm going to click cylinder and click S, and that's just going to bring us in. And let's turn on the right type of shading. And then I think how we're going to do this is with selection. So I want to go into face mode, UL. And I think the metalness is going to start here. So let's go from this. And it's going to cut off. Let's say on this edge. So now we've got these two points and all that's left to do is go select, fill selection, and then we have this whole middle part selected. So now we can click select and store selection. And now we have this tag here, which we can use. So next up, let's go and create redshift materials and let's grab material and we'll throw this on the can and then let's grab aluminium 
and the roughness can be set to something like 0 0.5 and let's just check how that's looking and yeah, maybe a little bit less I think that's a fine starting place let's focus on getting the sticker working so we want to create another one and this time let's choose a standard and now we want to go and get our selection back Okay, cool. So we have our selection, and now let's apply our standard material. So now you can see on the bottom we have our aluminium, where we need it to be, and then on top we have the standard. So next up, I have the Sado sticker, which the designer very kindly sent over. Check the description and check out his stuff, it's really cool. So just without anything, let's drag in our new V, and see what happens because this UV is designed to the dimensions of a tall boy can so what happens if we stick on the color well I'll put that actually I want to keep the camera where it is but we can just rotate around this and see if everything is mapping correctly so I'll put play again just to check And this isn't looking quite right to me because if we pull up our reference on pure ref. Okay, let's look at the can again. This doesn't look bad, but I know that this other edge isn't supposed to look like that. We're too high up. So I'm going to click pause on redshift and we could UV map this, but because it's so close, I think we can just go in and play with these coordinates. Okay, so let's go into our remap, and I'm cheating because I've already done this before. But I think that should give us the result that I'm looking for. Let's check. Okay, great. That's all lining up. So all this to say is that if you have a really simple setup and the sticker matches the size of the object you're creating, you don't always have to worry so much about UVs, especially if you're working with such nice squares. Um, but again, this is more of an exception than a rule. So if you're working with a can and you model it to the exact dimensions of the tall boy, then great and you know if you're only a couple of millimeters off you can always go into the remap and just change this offset and scale ever so slightly so let's just do a tiny bit more of a setup and grab a redshift material standard and put that on a cube and have that cube scaled down a tad And at this point, I want to use my camera again. So we'll go into our RS camera view. And, and here we make sure Ridge of Camera's on. And then we can just check everything is looking okay. So at this point, you can really make sure to ramp up the subdivisions on the renderer and see if there are any finicky bits. Remember, at this point, you can always go back inside and get your handy UL tool. And if everything's not quite right, you can go into line mode and line tool and we could scale this or we could always use our slide which is MO just to get these radius looking just perfect but I think that's good enough for me so that's the initial setup of the silo can and I'm probably going to be making a few more videos. If there's a specific part of a can that you'd like to see, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.